I think that's all. I've kind of, I must have kind of wiped out my. But yeah, you're a true was... gentleman. Clearly, you're very discreet. <laughs> but time for romance in this film is short-lived. So they're coming to the end of the battle. One of the great challenges for the actors at this stage is that they're fighting things that they can't even see. The battle scenes have been amazing. Yeah, there's some great, great scenes in the courtyard where. Just, it's just basically all the Death Eaters against kind of the students. And it's just a massive, like, real epic. Kind of epic. Yeah, it's great. You know, the giants and the, the spiders. And aren't there the animated... Um, the the festivals and the... the your festival, your statues, your ghosts. Your statues that come to life with your ghosts. And don't forget the snake. Kill the snake. We have to kill the snake. Ah. Ah. Did you get the snake? I have now said that is that that line or variants of that line is all I say for the last 45 minutes. <laughs> That's essentially okay. what I do. Kill the snake! We've got to kill the snake! We have to kill the snake! It's all you know, it's all very much about the snake. And are you uh, gonna get it right at some point so we can all go to lunch? Um, um, could you... That's a good question. <laughs> Although, you are only coming here for a day, you are a guest, a little bit of a call. <laughs> but the battles, it's coming towards the climax, which they're shooting out there. And um, Neville's been through the wars since day one. I mean, he's had the whole year at school. He's just been beaten and tortured by the Death Eaters. I mean, all these are sort of supposed to be old, older wounds. So they've just a build-up of wounds? Yeah, yeah, over the year, um, where he's you know, stood up for Dumbledore and what's right, and he's paid the price for it, really. Uh, whereas this one, this one's a new one. This happens in the, in the, and, the, and the burns as well. Look at the burns. This is from uh, the, the, the bridge scene, where uh, Neville has to try and halt the advancing Death Eaters and they plant some charges on the bridge, a bit like a bridge too far. Right. Um, and uh, he's on the bridge when it goes, when it goes down. Yeah. And then he's just been, again, a bit more. Uh, Voldemort's just fired him through uh, with a spell, and he's come 50 yards into here, across all this rubble, and landed somewhere over there. Down that on way. On all those beds over there. And, and he stretches the land up. Yeah, exactly. Is it a comfortable fall? I think that's how he survived, with the stretchers. Okay. So he got up and... Why um, have they got, in, in the world of magic and, and wonderful craziness, why have they got Second World War mattresses? I can't answer that. No. I'm afraid I can't answer that. I but at know. least you survived. But yes, we survived. Yeah, so we're OK. And um, he gets up and then stumbles out, out here for the climax of the battle. I've seen you waving a sword about. And I, the I wish sword of Gryffindor. Look, that's look. Here it is. This is the sword keeper. Yeah. Here we go. This is the side of Godric Griffin. Can I have a feel? Can do, he's go for it. Ooh, that's, that's got a nice weight to it. It's pretty cool, isn't it? So do you get given sort of, like, um, sword fighting lessons? We had a few. We had a few, like... Can you give me a tip? To, how to, what, um, am I holding it correctly? Is this... You're holding it fine, I guess. Okay. I mean... Uh, I'm from Essex, so I have a, oh, right, you know, okay. some <laughs> right. history with sword fighting. <laughs> OK, right. Well, I guess the main thing is, is to have a very sort of a firm grip on the sword for a start. Right. And then you, you, you block it. When it's blocked, we're blocking spells. Yeah. We're actually sword fighting. OK, so it's a bit so like... So it has to be a very, sort of, a very extravagant sort of Go on, show sweep. Me, you know. what, we do, what we've been doing is sort of when we're blocking the spell, it's very sort of Value. all the way up like that wow, and, then, and then blocking them away. Really sort of... It's almost like a sliced backhand exactly, on a table exa tennis table. Exactly, yeah, But yeah, with yeah, the sword. Slicing it that way. Talk me through what you're doing, cos you and uh, Rupert seem to be doing a lot of rolling around in the rubble. We are. Well, you see, we're being chased by a giant snake. Ah, oh, right. We've been watching a lot yeah. of attempts to kill this snake today. <laughs> we have. We keep failing. And, and, and Ron's stuck under you, so he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't get to be the hero. Hang on, no. Oh. We, we fall down together and he, he protects me and holds me in a loving embrace as we're about to die. <laughs> Well, it's quite a tight space where we have to fall in, and we have to be holding hands as well. And we have to kind of fall, kind of romantically as well. So. <laughs> See, is that was that a stage direction? Was, yeah. <laughs> was it really? Well, yeah. She's got to kind of nestle into me, and <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's quite cool. But um, so, is that something that you you coordinate with Emma? Like, let's. This is how we're going to nestle. This is how we're going to do it full romantically. Yeah, because this is kind of this is after the kiss, all this stuff. So we're kind of a couple now. All this rolling around and fighting, and you're gonna get a few cuts and bruises along the way. This was my addition, the what? sexy cut lip. Hold on. Did that something you did or something you asked for? <laughs> that was something that I asked for. Um, so you looked at it, so you thought, I, I've got to have... I was like, if we're gonna do this whole epic 
you know, beaten up, beaten up thing, I want a cut lip. And you've got a great graze on your neck as well. Oh, well that's not is... love bite or something, is it? No. <laughs> Ron's been in the That would have been awkward. No, <laughs> um, this, is the, this is from Bellatrix. She tries to slit my throat, actually. She's good like that, isn't she? Yeah, she's pretty mean. Um, yeah. I still find it incredible, though, because looking at you, and I'm, I'm stood, you know... Very close uh, to me. And it still looks so real, so the, I know, the it, scar on your neck or the cut on your lip. It's amazing. funny, because I forget. I wear it all day, and then I catch myself in the mirror, and I'm like, God, I look terrible. <laughs> I look really bad. Um, no, but it's fun. It's, it's fun. Sounds good. So I'm off to make up to get a little injury of my own. So, Amanda, what are you going to do to me? So we're going to make you battle-worn. Oh, OK. So we're going to give you, we have all these little pieces here that we've made up. So this would be like a hit that you could have had a punch underneath the eye. It could have been some falling debris. There's so many places that people could have got wounded in this battle. Um, majority probably from falling debris, from spells that the Death Eaters are putting on the castle. Okay. So we have a whole pizza box here of an pizza. array <laughs> of um, different... I didn't know pizza delivery did this sort of <laughs> thing. Bondo wounds. Yeah. It keeps them flat. Um, so there's all sorts of different scrapes and grazes and things that we put Gosh, on, and then we can colour them, um, and then you know then you can go out there and get covered in all the dirt. See the thing about the cuts though is I bet I mean they must be sort of great fun to have on. They love them for the first bit. And they all want the biggest cuts and the biggest wounds. <laughs> and there's always a battle going on of who's got the best cut. And then that's fine for the first week. And after that, when they're in long makeups, like Neville gets really badly and he's he's in makeup for quite a long time. And he's lost interest. Has he? Yeah. And now he wishes that he'd gone for something smaller and <laughs> So it sounds that it's a good idea at the time and there's a big sort of lots of scar envy goes on. Who's got the best scar? There's a moral in there, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> Be careful so what you wish for. Yeah, exactly. After the break, as filming comes to a close, the stars reflect on growing up in the public eye. In Kid Star's top trumps, we're worth nothing. Nothing. And we find out how they're feeling about it all coming to an end. I don't know. I guess I'm in denial. Hey, what? Well, you should see the other fella. It's nearly the end for Harry, Voldemort, the good, the bad and the ugly who populate the world created by J.K. Rowling in that cafe at the end of the last millennium, which means it's nearly the end for us too. The young stars of the films have grown from children to adults before our very eyes and have actually spent more than half their lives playing their characters. What's that been like watching them grow up? Well, it's extraordinary and they're great. It's been lovely and a bit of a shock. You suddenly go, you know, like, Rupert suddenly talking like this. And <laughs> I remember Christopher Columbus saying he'd just been up in the cutting room and they'd been in, done the invisibility cloak bit and Rupert had gone in talking like this and then, of course, they'd shocked when he came out months later and he'd come out talking like this. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to... He'd gone through puberty of... under the cloak. He had! An amazing thing happens in Harry Potter. I know! Lots of people would like to go through puberty That'd under so a cloak, easier, wouldn't, wouldn't they? It's <laughs> such a difficult time. But so, when you see sort of clips from, like, the first one, um, the Philosopher's Stone, they're just so cute, aren't they? I'd forgotten they were like that. And now, they're, yes, they're young men and young women. You can't help but feel maternal. I'm seeing them grow up and thinking they're going out into the world now. It's like, it feels like that. You know, you feel sort of to protect them and a bit. So there's yeah, a bit of, of that feeling. You don't never say that to them. No. no don't tell anyone. No, no, no. But um, <laughs> <laughs> from the very beginning, Dan, Rupert, and I have been made aware that I almost feel like we were ticking bombs that the public just expected, expected. You know, as you said, about this time, you know, around now, they'll be losing it. But I think it's a number of different things. I think it's the English film industry is very different from Hollywood. Um, and I think this particular environment, the fact that we've had, you know, a solid base, leaves and studios, it's, we've just been incredibly sheltered. We're not part of a, of a bigger...